Is inflation an opportunity for businesses to invest in innovation? Huh. I, I mean, I, I think it depends, <laughs> but I think every, every season of business is sort of, I would say you have to be looking at innovation. Now, should you be spending a ton of money right now on trying to come up with some new innovation? Um, you know, I think you have to think about that, right? And you have to balance the risk of doing that. You have to balance out what you can do right now. Um, you know, and so there's there's a huge gamut of what you should be doing right now. But I think I think what I would say you should be focused on, no matter what type of inflation season or recession or um, you know whatever economic situation we're in, you should be focused on your customers and are you delivering value to our customers um, or your customers? You know, right now, and what is that value delivery mechanism? And then you should be investing in making that better. You should be always improving that process or innovating that process of what you're doing. So, you know, inflationary times, um, they can be very scary. Markets are typically unpredictable. A lot of things can happen and change very, very quickly. So there's some risk, you know, there's some real risk associated with trying to be an innovator in an inflationary setting. But I would definitely say, you know, just from my default stance on innovation and what it can do is this is a good time for you to focus on on your core and that story and that should center around your customers and the value you're delivering to customers. So, I mean, Albert, if you think about this question, what have we done at SIMF, um, you know, through this season of, of high inflation? Well, first of all, um, well, inflation is, by what I understand about it is, and I'm not an economics guy, but by what I understand about this, inflation is like the rise of prices of some basic commodities. It's not necessarily the price of everything, but it's like um, when the demand exceeds supply of a set of basic commodities that does driving the price of those basic commodities up so then when those you know prices go up you call it inflation now the thing about that is that everybody you know purchases those basic commodities so basically the cost of living goes up uh, when you as a human being are trying to survive <laughs> you need to get a hold of food uh, you need to get a hold of you know your supplies and so since prices for those goods go up then your cost of living goes up so when that happens, um, I think like for, for SIMF, what we've done is basically like, I mean, straightforward salary increases, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if not to match inflation, but to also go even beyond inflation. Um, but to be honest, inflation is not really the thing that's affecting our industry. I mean, software development industry. For me, I'm not watching inflation. Um, for pegging salary increases. I'm looking at international salary rates and the coming down of borders and work becoming more remote where before, uh, you know, a Filipino could get a job overseas remotely was, was quite difficult. So it wasn't accessible to all. But now because of the pandemic, you know, people in the US, people in overseas are now much more open to open up their, you know, their context frame of mind. Like if if I can have my current worker in the US just join our team via Zoom and work from home, what difference does it make? You know, there's a bit of a difference, but what what big difference does it make if I recruit somebody from the Philippines, right? Who can do the same job or up to the same level of quality, maybe even more. And I could I could actually pay this person in the Philippines due to cost of living differentiators um, less than I would hire somebody in the US. But for this Filipino guy, this less rate by the American is so much bigger than local market rates. And so that then drives the salary increases of people um, in, I would say, developing countries. And so to me, that, that salary increase is much, much bigger than inflation. I'm not looking at inflation. I'm looking at this. <laughs> 
the coming down yeah. of borders and the increase of remote work is the primary driver of salary increases. So when yeah. somebody tells me like, oh my gosh, inflation, like we need to, you know, salary increase. I'm like, dude, so inflation is nothing. Inflation is nothing <laughs> compared to remote work opening up for the rest of the world. The fight for yeah. talent just went from local to global. And in order to compete, your price increases, I mean, your your salary increases are, are not inflationary. They are explosionary. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that's very true. And I would even say one thing that has shifted this time around, you know, outsourcing existed for a long time and, and taking advantage of the salary arbitrage, right? Like what you might pay in a developed country versus what you're paying in a develop, developing country. Um, you can you can have some arbitrage there and savings as a company. Now, that's even changed to a certain degree now. Like uh, certain companies, especially in our industry, like the tech startups and things like that, they're also coming up with remote work policies that do say equalize salaries, sort of, you know, there's some adjustments to the local that you'll live in. But, you know, I'm thinking of like Airbnb in particular, um, they're trying to figure out ways to support their team as they become a global entity and people can work almost from anywhere and their salary would not necessarily, you know, go to what we might call like a local rate anymore. And so, um, yeah, definitely we're seeing this now we're in the service sector. So people, um, are, you know, people are driving our team and we, we love our team. We need our team members. We had to factor in how to deal with these challenges. Now you may be in a more traditional business where, you know, actually your cost of goods sold is is adjusting and changing because of the input goods that you need to produce your output mm -hmm. and so inflation may be affecting that um, you know if you're in something that relies on logistics the cost of oil and therefore gas has been going up now down a bit but you know it's, there's been a lot of volatility there related to inflation um, you know and at the end of the day i would agree that these are things that we don't like to think about or plan for, but they are the reality of what tends to happen. You know, we didn't foresee the pandemic coming. Um, maybe you could argue that a few people might have, but um, just in a general sense, that was not something that we simp were looking forward to planning for. Um, and we had to adjust. We had to find ways to adjust. Now, if inflation is affecting you in a similar way, then you know your response will have to be the same you'll have to make some adjustments likewise for us hasn't necessarily been inflation um, it's been the explosion of remote work and and the effect that international companies sort of looking at going fully remote or lowering their borders or requirements for having employees in all sorts of countries all over the world has just changed the salary dynamics and the pay dynamics for the software development industry as a whole. How are businesses dealing with inflation right now? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, I know that a lot of businesses are trying to figure out how to deal with this. Um, a lot of even say where we pay attention, you know, VCs and different investors have been giving guidance or advice to, to the startups that they've invested in on what they should be doing on how they should be thinking about managing their investments, um, you know, and, and what the future rounds of funding will look like. Now, obviously this advice really depends on, on what type of industry you're in, on, on what your business model is, on how badly you may be affected by inflation. I would say that definitely you should think about how might we respond to inflation, you know, if it's really affecting you or if it's affecting your customers. I think one thing that, that would be vitally important and that I see happening is businesses are looking at and asking themselves, how do we respond to this? Um, you know, so quick thoughts on that. Um, adjusting your price, you know, so sometimes, and this will, this will seem very counterintuitive, but you may have to raise your prices um, to respond to inflation, you know, because if your say cost of goods are going up and you're not adjusting your prices, then you could be cutting into your margins. Now you may say, well, we just need to do that to survive. 
um, you know, that's again for you and your financial analysts and your financial advisors to decide. So you may think of it from those two perspectives. Number one, you may have to increase your prices in order to justify the work and the services that you're doing. And number two, you may actually say, well, I can be more competitive by maintaining my prices, lowering my margins, um, you know, maybe for this period of time, and then I'll be able to reach more customers. So there's a few ways that you can think about how to handle this, but that's, that's sort of the thing that I've seen. In the startup industry specifically, you know, I've seen a lot of teams thinking about holding off on expansion, you know, whether that's hiring more people, whether that's um, investing in a new innovation or new product, and sort of trying to figure out what are the core business items that I need to focus on right now. I think the general sentiment that I get, you know, from from say VCs or investors that I follow is that the requirement to raise another round has been raised. You know, it's it's become say more challenging where as a startup founder or a startup business, you sort of need to show more. Um, and that tends to mean that valuations are being questioned, maybe being pushed down a bit um, because of the sentiment or the feel that investors have for what the future might hold. Um, and I think that's the thing about about inflation and just economies in general, you have to realize that at the end of the day, it comes down to people, right? Like markets are made up of people and people tend to be very irrational um, and people tend to also make decisions based on what they feel or what they think the future might hold. And I'm in that category. You know, I, I definitely will make choices based on what I feel the future might hold. And so you have to understand that and respect that. And, and that's how you as a business owner can deal with inflation. What about you, Albert? What are you seeing businesses do? And likewise, what have we done internally at SEMF to to deal with this, if anything? Okay, I don't I don't know. Um, okay, here's my take. So I know when inflation happens, like prices of goods go up, but I think my assumption is that during these time periods of uncertainty, prices of investment actually goes down. Like it's basically actually cheaper to invest because you know this there's uh i would say less money chasing companies for investment right i mean if you're a vc i would almost think like this is the best time to invest <laughs> because yeah. founders don't have much choices and so you would get better you know better prices for your investment you get better valuations and by better valuations i mean like cheaper valuations so i think my assumption is actually I mean, I'm not a VC, so this is just the way I'm looking at it. And maybe I'm missing something completely here. But my assumption is like cheaper to buy stocks during a, a downturn. Um, and I'm guessing, I don't know, am I confusing inflation with recession? Um, not necessarily, because they just, they do tend to work together and move together. So yeah, definitely like markets are down. Um, and we might say we're yeah. in a bear so market. So when I hear right? markets market are down, I also hear, down. so when I hear markets are down, I hear markets are cheap. So, mm -hmm. so it's like, now is a good time to buy. Um, yeah. I mean, if you, if you previously bought, now is a horrible time to sell. Um, <laughs> but if, if you're thinking about investing, like now is the perfect time to invest. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, that's, that, I don't know how I, I would say deal with this in, in, in the business. I think maybe because we have bigger problems than this <laughs> yeah. um that that because we're focused on the, the the disappearing of borders the rising of um, competition on on um tech worker compensation that we have to deal with um we're talking about you know 100 percent inflation yeah. it's on like that an side. existential crisis whereas inflation yeah. um we're, okay maybe eight it, ten it percent inflation, inflation is, it, it's very high but compared to this 100% increase in, in salaries. Um, yeah. Much yeah, smaller it's crisis. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, as I said, this is an explosion of, of tech worker salaries um, in developing countries. And so us being yeah. forced to deal with that essentially like takes care of problems with inflation already. Yeah.
You know, I think if I could share just one other point, you know, just understanding some of the basics of the way that these things move can be very valuable for you as a business owner or startup founder. Um, so what do I mean by that? You know, if you're a new startup founder and you're trying to get your idea built and you were planning to go fundraise, this may not be the best time for you to fundraise, right? Because as Albert mentioned, um, the VCs, you know, there's there's power in a relationship, right? And so the power has shifted to the VC side a bit because, you know, if you're a founder, you suddenly don't have that many options, right? Because people are more constrained, people are being more conservative with their investments. They have a higher threshold of risk adversity, right? They want to avoid risk, basically. And so you as a startup, you tend to be rather risky, right? We just don't know if this is this idea is going to work, if you're going to be able to do it off. And so from a VC perspective, you're a bit limited where you might be able to raise funds. And I think that it's important to know these things and just think about these things. Does it mean you shouldn't start your startup right now? Not necessarily, but it does mean that you may have to look at what are the other ways that we could become a revenue generating company? How could we have a bit, even small, of a net margin starting out until, say, the market dynamics shift back and you're then able to, to go fundraise? All right. Well, thanks for joining Dave and Albert for Economics 101. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, I'm but, yeah. Economics 001. <laughs>